But let's get to work. Here's a mirror, plain mirror, and here's a beam of light coming in. And you see that as the beam of light comes in, it's gonna leave at the same angle as it entered all the time. And the interesting thing about mirrors is that we can bend them. So I could start with a mirror like this. This mirror is concave over here. So as I come in parallel to the axis of the mirror, I leave, ooh, always sort of aiming at a certain point. Do you see this point where it's always kind of hitting? I might call that the focal point of the mirror. Sorry, I'm kind of blocking it right there. Yeah, there we go. Right there, all these parallel rays are converging right there. That defines a focus of the mirror. So this kind of a mirror, a concave mirror, is a converging mirror because it causes the rays from wherever they start, here, 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 to converge at that single point. But if I flip this mirror over, notice I've got a mirrored surface over there. I got a diverging mirror now, check it out. See, it causes the ray to go up and down here the ray goes down. Yeah, Ooh, this is getting really hot, wow. Yeah, mm-hmm, good. So that's a diverging mirror because it's convex. And we also have discussed the principles of refraction. So as I send a ray of light into here, if I send it straight in, then you see the ray of light inside the block and you see it come out of the block and everything's fine. But if I send it in at an angle, if I, oh, if I send it in an angle, let me put the block like this. I think that'll be more interesting. If I put the block like this and I send it in at an angle, you see that I can get the uh, ray of light to come in at a weird angle and then see it, it breaks here. It's not, I mean, it's not, breaking like it's broken, but it's definitely making a very sharp bend and it goes this direction and then it comes back out. And notice this initial ray coming in is parallel to that final ray that's leaving right there. But in the medium, it's going more slowly, so it tries to actually minimize its time in the medium. The principle of least time is a hugely important physical principle. So the light knows which way, I mean, I guess it tests every way in some very uh, interesting way, and it tests every possible path and finds the path that takes the least time and takes it. So knowing this, you guys could actually just pause your screen and find a, uh, the index of refraction of this block of plastic that I've got right here. That's cool, but notice that the incoming ray is always parallel to the outgoing ray. Yep, but what if, what if I have something a little more interesting like a curved block of plastic or glass or a really curved block of plastic or glass, notice this. I bring it in and it curves really dramatically. A parallel ray coming in seems to be always pointing towards something. Watch this. This is convex, right? Wouldn't you agree this is convex? Now I'm saying that everywhere in here we're kind of pointing towards a particular location. Problem is this is a circular cross section so it hasn't, doesn't have a really well defined focus. But I'm gonna argue that somewhere around here all the parallel rays are trying to join. And this must be a focal point. So there's a focal length that we can define for this very strange lens. With a more uh, reasonable type of lens, we'd do it like this and we'd say that is, oh, look at the focus on this guy. I'm bringing in parallel rays and the focus on this guy is probably much further away. It, it may even be beyond my piece of paper. As the rays come in parallel, they bend more and more as we get further and further. Well, we get closer to this side of the mirror where the angle is sharper. Ultimately, might make sense to look at a prism. Oh, a prism has all cool, all kinds of cool things that we could study. Notice that as the light comes in, it bends towards the normal as it enters the prism, and it bends away from the normal as it leaves the prism. So you get all kinds of cool stuff like this, bending towards the normal, bending away from the normal. Ooh, that's kind of ideal. It's bending towards the normal and then away from the normal, but it makes it continue turning. That's kind of funky. Watch this though. See all this light that's coming out right here? As I get this more and more dramatically bending away from the normal, see it's really coming in to this intersection here, going into this, um, this smaller index of refraction. Light can travel faster out here, so it wants to spend more time out here than it does inside the block of acrylic. Watch as I go even steeper. Can you notice what's happening right there? That light is getting closer and closer to never making it out of the block of plastic at all. Watch it. Watch it now, careful, careful. Ooh, you see that rainbow effect? Yeah, that's why they call them prisms. Look at this. 
Boom! Suddenly, no light at all escapes. Now the light is entirely trapped in there. That's called the critical angle right there. Boom! That's the critical angle. You could measure that, and it depends on the index of refraction. In fact, it's a very easy bit of math. Maybe I'll make a video to do it, or maybe you'll do it on your own, for crying out loud. And then, once it's totally internally reflecting, then we get a bounce off of here, inside here. Look at that. Look at that. You see that other beam is also totally internally reflecting? And I've actually got no light at all out here. No light at all is is coming off of this bounce. But if I go really close, I can get the light to quantum jump through there, which is really interesting. I don't want to talk too much about quantum physics with you right now, but notice that I can make total internal reflection happen right here. Finally, <clears throat> we could also make a lens that's shaped like this. And the funny thing about this lens is I bring a ray of light in that's parallel and it's bend, well, it's not bending at all if I'm in the middle, right? But it bends down at the bottom and it bends up at the top. So this kind of a lens is diverging, but it's concave. Remember our converging lens? The converging lens is convex. Whoa. What if I put these two together? Check this out. Now, a ray coming in parallel leaves parallel, but it's doing all kinds of funky stuff in the middle. Yep, I agree. Bringing two lenses together makes some very complicated optics happen, which is really fun. But note right now that the action of a mirror is the opposite action of a lens. They're sort of like capacitors and resistors, or capacitors and inductors in that sense, because um, <clears throat> a concave lens is diverging, and a convex mirror is diverging. And similarly, a concave mirror is converging, see that focal point that's forming right there, and a con Vex lens is converging. Okay, bye.